Hi, Marco here. I get it. You don't want to try out a new CI tool and immediately be vendor locked into its features. That's why we made it very simple for you to use your command line scripts that are essentially your build pipelines and run them with TeamCD Cloud. Let me show you how to do that. Even better, I created a small project on GitHub for you. It's called Build Pipelines. You'll find the link to the repo in the video's description. And there's two microservices, an authorization microservice and a calculator microservice inside the same repository. Why did I put two microservices into the same repository? Because I wanted to receive those YouTube comments saying this is the wrong way to do it. And also because it makes it a bit easier for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to copy the URL, go to my Team City server, which is completely empty at the moment. And I'm just going to go create project down here. I want to be sure I'm on the from a repository URL project wizard, because here it's simply enough to paste in a URL to any repository, any format. And I could also specify username and password, which I don't have to do because it's a public repo. I'm going to hit proceed. And what happens next is Team City just successfully connected to the repo. It says, hey, your GitHub repository is called Build Pipelines. So let me create a Team City project, which is also called Build Pipelines. Makes sense. There's your repository URL, just for confirmation purposes. It also shows you the default branch, the main branch. It's going to poll every 60 seconds for changes by default and then trigger builds. And you also have a wildcard branch specification down here saying, well, any branch, be it a feature branch, a development branch, staging branch, prop branch, uh, Team City is also going to pull every 60 seconds and trigger builds. If you don't want that, simply delete the branch specification. Otherwise, leave it in. There's one last field I skipped. It's called build configuration name here. What is a build configuration? Coming from other CI tools, a build configuration in Team City is a job. So job equals build configuration. Every Team City project needs a job. It needs something to do. So that's your default build configuration right here. Let's hit proceed again. And now Team City tries to be smart. It actually scans the files in your repository and says, I found some Docker files. Do you want me to add a build step? So every build configuration slash job needs one or many build steps. Do you want me to add a Docker specific build step? Or do you want me to add a Maven specific build step as I detected some PomXML files? We don't want these auto detected build steps for now because we have our own command line script. So you can simply uh, click this link here. I want to configure everything manually. And then Team City prompts you with a drop down. It says, what do you want to do? Let's ignore all these other options here. I'm going to explain them in future videos. But for now, I just want to go with command line because I want to run a command line script. You have another drop down saying, do you want to paste the command line script in here straight in the Team City UI, which we actually want to do? Or do you want to reference the script somewhere else? For now, I'm just going to paste in my super duper complex build script which essentially after Team City cloned the project, we're going to CD into one of the microservices, the calculator microservice. We're going to run Maven Clean Package, which by default is installed on all our build agents. Maven uh, is and Java is and many other tools also. Maven Clean Package will actually compile the Java sources. They will run some tests. They will also, uh, there will also be a jar file created, my final output, my deliverable. And then the deployment step is basically I'm running the AWS command line tool, copying that jar file to my private S3 bucket. That's all I want to do. So I'm just going to hit save and that's it. Now, before I hit run, I know already there's a tiny problem left and that's because the command line script, when it runs and it wants to upload something to S3, it needs, well, username and password, it needs some credentials. Or in AWS speak, it needs an access key ID and the, well, the access key secret. And one of the ways how you specify that is that on the build agents that your job runs on, there's uh, two environment variables set with your username and password, so to speak. And you can do that easily in TeamCity. 
where you just click the parameters link here. You add a new parameter and you have the option of, do you want to add a configuration parameter, system property? I'm going to talk about those also in other videos. For now, I'm just going to go with one environment variable. And I'm just going to copy the name from a text file I have open in here, AWS access key ID. And I'm also going to paste in my access, my actual access key ID in here. Don't worry, by the time you're watching this video, that key and credentials will be rolled over. So don't worry, you cannot reuse them. And then for like sensitive data like this, what I like to do is I like to go with, I'm going to edit the parameter and set the type to password, which means Team City will hide the parameter value um, in the UI. It will hide it from the build log later on, so it will effectively be gone. So I'm just going to hit save here. And now we see the access key ID is already masked. Now practice makes perfect. Let's add another environment variable, the actual key, right? The secret access key. And I'm just going to take the value here as well. I'm just going to repeat what I just did. Set it to password. Right. And there we have our two environment variables. That should be enough to run a build. So let me just hit run. And as it's the first time I just click that run button, I'm being redirected back to my overview page. Now I have a project here, as you can see, the build pipelines project with the one job slash build configuration. You just saw the build was queued. It's now already running because a Team City Cloud agent has been spawned up and is ready for use. And you can see here, here's parts of the build log, what it's doing. You can effectively see every tiny step the build agent is now doing. And now we're going to wait for a little while till the build has finished. Right, that was quick. And it shows, Team City shows my favorite color, the green color. Everything was successful. Build number one ran uh, July the 30th, uh, sometime half past 11. It took like 39 seconds on a Linux small agent that, that it booted up automatically. And you're using command line scripts, which means the only well effective output you now have is the build log. If you used other Team City specific features, you'd also get a test report and you'd also get a coverage report and many other things. But for now, you can only access the build log, which is absolutely fine. So let's do that. Let's go to the build log and you'll see already it's somewhat of a smart build log. So instead of forcing you to just download the full build log onto your machine, and then opening it up with Notepad++, for example, we're actually trying to, you know, for example, uh, collapse the build log, make it easily searchable by going Control F. If you, for example, search inside um, the build log for success, you'll be redirected to, yeah, here's the uh, success message, the Maven success mes message. Afterwards, this is where the AWS CLI tool uploaded everything. And you can actually use the search for fairly big build logs with fairly good speed. Just give it a try. Now, as I mentioned, this all of this is fine if you just want to use TeamCity as a build orchestrator running you know, various command line scripts, but also what you can do, and what I'm gonna show you in future videos is take tiny parts out of that command line script and make use of Team City specific features, like for example, those test reports I've been talking about, or code coverage reports that might, might make sense. So you're not fully locked into our CI tool. That's about it. Bye.